This is the Herdline News. So Matt LaFleur has a whole team of Packers to coach right now, but his relationship with Aaron Rodgers is obviously priority. And one of LaFleur's former quarterbacks thinks his old boss is perfect for that part of the job. RG3 played under LaFleur in Washington and said, Matt knows how to navigate those waters. He knows how to identify and pull on what motivates you which may be different from guy to guy. Most importantly, he knows how to win. And ultimately, that's something that Aaron and everybody in between can jump on board with. There's a lot of uh, new quarterback coach combinations you were just talking about. Yeah, yeah. Two of them a few seconds ago. Yeah. I think it's safe to say this one has the most pressure on it. Yes. It's yeah. a very interesting situation. <laughs> it really is. I, you know, Freddie Kitchens, obviously, we're, we're a little confused by that hire but sure. you know you can be optimistic maybe it'll work out you know baker's still very young yeah. so if it doesn't work out oh, it's not the end of the time. world yeah. you know you can make changes um cliff kingsbury obviously another interesting situation kind of the same as baker mayfield though like new head coach not no experience as a head coach young quarterback see how that goes this one feels a little i mean even sam darnold like, Adam Gase probably has a little bit more pressure on him because he has been a head coach before, but it's still, you know, there still feels Listen, like it's not the end of the world. Let, but let's be honest, out. Joy. If if this Matt LaFleur thing two years in doesn't work. It's a disaster. Well, Aaron's 37. Right. It's a disaster. It's it's over. Like, Aaron's legacy is reshaped. Because I, I don't see Aaron playing to 41. And you don't even see them making the playoffs next year. How can you? If you start looking at the NFC and rosters, Chicago's roster, it should be noted, is young. I mean, they're still on Trubisky's contract. They can bring in a free agent. They've got they've they've shown an ability. Ryan Pace, the GM in Chicago, shown an ability to draft. Minnesota's got a good roster. They may not win the big game, but they win a lot of games. I mean, I I think they have the third best roster in their division after Minnesota and Chicago in their division. It's really interesting. So it was the non-call heard around the world. The lack of a flag on Nikel Roby Coleman for pass interference has been discussed nonstop since it happened. And shockingly, the Rams have grown tired of the constant talk. Well, get used to it because you're going to hear it for probably for the rest of time, but at least certainly for the next two weeks. And Andrew Whitworth called into the Rich Eisen show yesterday to talk about it. The reality is, like, where do you want, like I said, where is the last foul that you want to argue? And whether it's, like, blatant or not, it's not a matter. It's whether it's a foul. So it's just one of those things that that's a slippery slope, and, it, and it's an excuse wherever you cut it. And the reality is they got the football after that snap. They played in overtime with the football. New England had the same situation and won the game. They didn't score. We did. We can argue about it all day, but they had, a, they had an opportunity to win the game, and we won it. Yep, and, I, and I'll go back to saying this. It would be one thing if it was the final play of the game. You know, like you mentioned, the tuck rule. There was a lot of football after the tuck rule. Remember years ago when um, Sacramento played the Lakers and the officiating was horrible and people said the NBA's rigged trying to help the Lakers. It was game six. Game seven, Sacramento was awful with a chance to win the series. There was a lot of football after that play. I mean, it's, it's hard when it's not the walk-off. I understand it's kind of, it. you know what I liken it to? The J.R. Smith blunder, right? Like everyone looked at that situation like J.R. Smith blew the game. Right. And, you know, it, it, it's the end of the world. But. But they still had time to play. They, they went into overtime. Over, in overtime. They were terrible in overtime. And to me, I, I get it. It's demoralizing. It's it's crushing. It's frustrating. But you got to pull together and say, forget about what just happened. Don't even think about it. Don't talk about it. Drop all of the energy from the entire situation. We have to focus and win the game. Yes. We'll discuss it later. Just, 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 you have to be, what do we always say? Emotionally disciplined? Yes. And I get it. It's awful. And the crowd is flipping out. But you have to rise above the situations because they're going to happen. Yes. And there's, there's human error to it. That being said, it's it's one of the worst on calls. Well, and time. the other thing and is. nobody wants to hear from the Rams right. in this spot. Like, I, I get it. You're trying to defend the fact that you're there and there was football to play afterwards. But, but, but it, sh it should be. I've, we've said it on this show before. Life's not about action as much as it's about reaction. reaction. I tell my kids all the time, you're going to have bad days. Okay, you're going to have bad actions. How do you react to it? Don't double down on it. Don't make a bad moment, a bad week. The Saints did not react well to it. Could have closed it out. Didn't. Rams did. That's life. That That's that's basically how life works. It's as much reaction as action. I don't know. 
I always say fair is for funnel cakes and fried Oreos, but, <laughs> you know, what do I know? That's funny. Finally, Golden State has dominated the league and won back-to-back titles since Kevin Durant joined the team, but there are rumors circulating that he might become free agent, leave the Warriors this offseason. Yesterday, Tracy McGrady said he thinks KD leaving the Warriors would be great for the NBA. Although I love seeing these guys play on the national, on the big stage every year, I just think we need some more parity. Kevin Durant has just completely changed everything when he went there and and made it not fair for the league. I would love for KD to spread the love around, spread it around, (laughs) so a team like New York Knicks can come back in the fold and be competitive in the Eastern Conference. Like, how awesome would that be? Time out. So if you really... So you want Kevin Durant, who's worked his whole life to be a great basketball player, made a super smart decision. You want Kevin to give all that up, the best run organization in the NBA, to go to a dumpster fire in New York. If you, I don't understand these players. Like, well, we really, we all really, really, really like, we're never going to give up on the we want New, the New York Knicks to be <laughs> competitive thing because it's so frustrating that uh, that a team like the Knicks, with the history of basketball in New York. And the, the brand, the way that it is, that they are not contenders. If you it's love players, but if, if you love players, and I have always supported NBA players in the mobility, because owners leave and GMs leave and coaches leave. If you love players, if, if, if I was really rooting for you, Joy, I wouldn't say, you know, Joy, I want you to work for the worst cable TV network in the world. No, I'd say stay where you're happy, stay where you're winning, stay where you feel. I mean, I get, I get what he's trying to say. Like, it would be cool good for the to have league, right? It'd be good for the league. Not but good, is for that him, good for him. Yeah, it's not good for Kevin Durant. Terrible and, and for I'm, him. And I'm, I feel safe in saying he's not going to do that. But I mean, who knows? Kevin. I, I, no one would have believed that LeBron would have been a Laker three years ago. So, who, who knows? But <laughs> I, I, I don't. I also don't don't like this whole idea because look at what's happening in the NFL. Like the point is to build a team that is good for a long time. If you're if you're an organization that's just trying to win one championship and be out of here, okay, go all in. You know, make it happen. Then everyone's gone. But the Warriors have built a dynasty. That's the they goal. They made it happen, and I, and I know it's frustrating. But that's the goal. I, I know it seems unfair, and Kevin Durant made it seem unfair. But they drafted Draymond Green, yes. Steph Curry, and Clay Thompson. Yes. Other teams had opportunities to draft them. Yeah, they weren't no. the number one overall pick. No, that's right. It's a the goal. They're doing exactly what the Patriots are, and nobody likes it. It'd be like saying, "No, Tom, it's good for the league if you go play for Tennessee." I mean, I get, I get being frustrated at Kevin Durant if you're that kind of person. I don't have any problem with it at no. all. But if you're really frustrated, be mad at your front office for not being better at putting together. Thank you. Joey Taylor with the news. Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Lie News. Rob Parker went all in on the Chiefs, got roasted, and the Patriots laughed at Rob Parker, and he little comeuppance for the Robster on our couch, chairs, coming up next. Uh, Dollar Shave Club was initially a 